I just told him, I said, I love you a lot. He and I have become very dear friends. And I surely love this man. And aren't you glad we look alike tonight? America is the global melting pot. To most Africans, anything Americans do must be acceptable. This shows the extent of America's impact in Africa and on several other continents. Once you grasp this, you can see how widespread the prosperity gospel has become in Africa. Many parts of Africa were steeped in paganism until Christian missionaries brought the gospel to them. Unfortunately, a different gospel is being promoted in many parts of Africa today, leading Africa back into spiritual darkness. This video will look at the top five famous American preachers sending Africa to the spiritual abyss through their prosperity gospel, name it and claim it theology, and fake miracles. Number 1. Kenneth Copeland Kenneth Copeland is the kingpin of the prosperity gospel and the word of faith movement. He crawls on the floor like an animal. laughs maniacally, <laughs> and talks in tongues in a weird way. Just open your mouth, let it say whatever it wants to say. You have Kenneth Copeland to thank for being responsible for raising and mentoring so many false teachers, like Todd White, Bill Johnson, Creflo Dollar, and many others. Sadly, Kenneth Copeland's influence reaches several parts of Africa. Bishop David Oyedepo is the founder of Living Faith Church Worldwide. Guess who mentors him? Kenneth Copeland. I'm glad tonight to have my most revered mentor who has taken time to be part of this feast. Yeah, we love you, sir. And we are ready to receive from you. Amen. In 2008, Bishop David Oyedepo's church was recognized by the Guinness World Records as the largest church in the world. Unquestionably, this demonstrates how widespread Kenneth Copeland's influence is. A false preacher mentors a man who owns one of the largest churches in the world. Watch this clip of false teacher Kenneth Copeland anointing Bishop David Oyedepo and conferring him with the title of apostle. This service is the first day of a new mandate. <laughs> to ensure that you understand what is going on here, Bishop Oyedepo, Nigeria's wealthiest and most famous pastor, is marking his 36th year in ministry. And there is no better preacher than Kenneth Copeland to lay hands on him for him to receive the greater anointing. The anointing shall go from prophet and teacher to apostle, prophet and teacher. And you'll walk in the apostle's anointing. No man will be able to gainsay you. No man. Great and marvelous miracles far beyond anything that any human eyes have ever seen will occur right here. So what is this deception all about? Promising false miracles, not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, and leading people to repent and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Keep watching because it will go from bad to really, really bad. Please help us spread biblical truth. Subscribe, like, and share. God bless you. In 2021, Kenneth Copeland revisited David Oyedepo's church. Listen to what Mr. Copeland said in his sermon. If this doesn't make you cringe, nothing else will. Who was the biggest loser? Satan? No. God. God lost his man. God lost the woman he created with his own hands. God had given Adam absolute authority over this planet and his own, 
his own created son committed high treason and bowed his knee to the devil and the devil took over. Adam had a leash on this earth and as such, he was literally the God of this world. It can't get any more blasphemous than this. God is the biggest loser because Adam disobeyed God. Adam was literally the God of this world? This video covered the top 10 preachers who claimed to be a god. Some of the names on the list will shock you. See the link in the description if you want to watch that video. Kenneth Copeland was a false teacher many years ago and is still a false teacher today. Who's the biggest failure in the Bible? God is. What you say? And I want you to know something. Adam in the Garden of Eden was God manifested in the flesh. And why are these false teachers so successful at what they do? Be because they're in cahoots with the devil. Why is Satan successful? Because his temptations, although they might appear noble on the outside, are in perfect accord with all the fallen, corrupt, selfish, proud, evil desires of sinners. This is a false kind of Christianity and a false view of God. Number 2. Benny Hinn Benny Hinn is one of the heavyweights of the prosperity gospel and faith healing. He's notorious for waving his magic white coat in the air. Somehow, everyone starts to fall backward or forward. What's more, Mr. Hinn is notorious for fake healing. But as, as this clip begins, I want you to watch, because I, I, as I was sitting there, I noticed this couple to my left. Uh, the gentleman was in a wheelchair, but uh, she was sitting next to him. And friends, I've, I've been to enough of these crusades. I, I can look around and I can kind of get a feel for who's going to get up on the platform or who's going to get them in front of the television camera to claim a miracle of healing. And as I was watching this couple, I thought that lady is going to get up because he's in a wheelchair. She was not, but I saw her rubbing her neck. Uh, just, just watch this. And the lady? Another neck injury 16 years ago, a car accident. Tonight she was able to move for the first time without pain in 16 years. That's a long time to have pain in the neck. It was really severe and it was just tormenting me. And I had become addicted to pain medication I've been off for years now, but still so tormented. And I just felt a release. Just move it. Lord Jesus, thank you. One of the notable faith healers Benny Hinn has influenced is Chris Oyaklome. Mr. Hinn has influenced Chris Oyaklome so much that he even wears white clothes like Benny. I don't know anyone who has brought that message about the, uh, the, fellowship, the fellowship and ministry of the Holy Spirit to this generation than the man of God who is here with us tonight. Can we welcome the man of God, Pastor Ben Hinn. And aren't you glad we look alike tonight? You just saw a crusade Ben Hinn hosted in Ghana, but there's more. One, two, three! Fire! Fire, oh my God! Fire! I charge you people of Africa, I charge you men and women in Ghana, I charge you men and women in Nigeria. I charge you men and women and servants of God in Africa and around the world. Be strong. Be bold. For the Lord God is with you. Fire in your being. Fire in your being. Hinn then goes on to make his fake prophecy, stating that Satan is losing his foothold in Ghana. I'm here to tell you, Satan is losing his foothold in this country. And as you pray, as you pray, ladies, you'll empower these men to put their foot on his neck. Well, when you see hundreds of fake pastors springing up in Ghana, one cannot help but conclude that Satan has gained more ground and intensified his attack in Ghana. We highlighted one of the fake pastors called Nana Poku in this video. Strange things are happening in African churches. Check out the link in the description if you want to watch that video. 
Indeed, Benny Hinn has negatively influenced false prophet Oyaklome, whose healing and miracle crusades sometimes draw up to one million attendees. An average Nigerian lives on less than one dollar a day, yet this corrupt and greedy false preacher lives in luxury. After performing his false miracles, thousands of poor and needy people are inclined to give their money with the hope of receiving their breakthroughs. This is pure wickedness. Is this what the gospel of Jesus Christ is all about? Waving a white coat in the air, people fall? This is shameful. We plead with not just the people of Africa, but everyone who cares to listen to stay away from false preachers like Benny Hinn and Chris Oyaklome. Take your needs and problems to Jesus. Lean on Him for strength and comfort even when all your earthly needs are not met. Get eternal perspective, because in heaven there will be no sickness or lack. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Revelation 21, verse 4. We sincerely pray that Benny Hinn and Chris Oyaklome repent and stop being tools Satan uses to deceive people. Number 3. Bishop T.D. Jakes Bishop T.D. Jakes, the founder of Potter's House, based in Dallas, Texas, is a famous word of faith, name it and claim it false teacher. Sadly, Bishop Jakes will not mind compromising biblical truth just to be accepted by liberal mainstream personalities like Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry. So do you, do you think, I'm assuming, uh, the LGBT community and the black church can coexist? Absolutely. I, I, let me push that question, because that, that's sort of an obvious yes. Church ain't turning nobody away. How should the black church and the LGBT community exist? I think it's going to be diverse from church to church. Every church has a different opinion on the issue, and every gay person is different. But how, how do we, first of all, has your thinking evolved on this? E evolved and evolving. E evolved and evolving. E evolved and evolving. It's a complex issue. It's a real complex issue, and it was in the Bible days. Sexuality versus spirituality. Yeah. Once you understand you're not God, you, you leave yourself an out clause <laughs> to grow. <laughs> I know that's yeah, right. to grow. So we were sitting in the service, and I leaned up toward him, and I said, I've just been touched to give a million dollars. We'll come upon you right now, keep you in the chair. God, I thank you for your blessings. Like Benny Hinn and Kenneth Copeland, T.D. Jakes has traveled to Africa to spread his prosperity gospel, which is a false gospel. In 2017, T.D. Jakes preached at the Africa Business and Kingdom Leadership Summit hosted in Ghana by Nicholas Duncan Williams, the presiding archbishop and general overseer of the Action Chapel International Ministry. These false teachers love titles, don't they? Why then do we see over and over and over again of all of the diseases, the dread diseases that existed in the day of Jesus. Why do we see over and over again Jesus healing blind person after blind person after blind person? It is because the eyes are an indication of having vision. And if you have no vision, the people perish. And periodically amongst us all, God will touch leaders and bishops and elders and lay people and open their eyes that there is more to life than what you see. Somebody shout more. more. Oh no, you said it. I said shout more. more. Until we shout for more. more. There we go. Until we shout for it, we won't get it. More of what, Mr. Jakes? The last time we checked, the Bible teaches Christians to seek God. Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His face continually. 1 Chronicles 16, verse 11. Our attitude and mindset change when we seek God. Praise and worship Him. Live holy, live righteously, and set our minds on things above, not on things on the earth, according to Colossians 3, verse 2. Some have questioned why we keep referring to the prosperity gospel as evil and dangerous. After all, God promised in His Word, the Bible, to bless and prosper His children. 
Sadly, the prosperity gospel caters to people's sensual and material needs, not spiritual ones. And that is not the gospel that transforms a sinner into a saint. What is the source of this? Where does this come from? Answer, Satan. This is satanic. This is satanic. This is not just off-center. This is satanic. Why do I say that? Because health, wealth, prosperity, the fulfillment of all your dreams and your desires, that's what Satan always offers. That's called temptation based on the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's exactly what corrupt, fallen, unregenerate people want. That's why it works so well, right? You can go right into Satan's system, make everybody feel religious, and turn a, their desires, their temptations into somehow honorable desires. Number 4. Rick Warren Rick Warren is a famous American preacher who, unfortunately, claims to be an evangelical pastor, but the false doctrines he promotes contradict what evangelicalism represents. Although he has denied it, many people credit Rick Warren for championing Chrislam in the United States. Here is a short clip from this video entitled, They Betrayed Evangelicals. May I speak to you for a moment, Rick Warren? You at Saddleback Church, who is bringing in the clerics from Islam in your area, Muslim leaders, and your own ministering staff to find the similarities between the Bible and the Quran. What about the contrasts? That's pretty serious business. This is dangerous. And I'm telling you, you promise that when you get together, you'll not try to convert one another. But 2 Corinthians 4, 3 says, if our gospel be hidden, it's hidden to them that are lost. We are to go and tell all the world about Jesus, every creature, Mark 16, 15. Think it over. Pray about it. If you don't believe that, I don't care what I read to you from all those sirs. First John 2, 22 says he is an antichrist who denies the Father and the Son relationship. We better do a little checking of our Bibles to see where the similarities are as well as the contrast because those contrasts make it dangerous for you to have eternal life. Rick Warren claimed in this video that he had taught over 500,000 leaders in over 162 countries. Can you imagine the number of people exposed to Warren's false theology? One day, my wife was, she was going to Africa a lot to study how the churches there were uh, dealing with people with AIDS. And so I thought, I'll go with her. Uh, and so I went with her to do what I do, which is I train leaders. In the last nearly 30 years, I've trained over a half a million leaders in 162 countries. And... In that leadership time, I just said, well, I, that's, that's what I do. So I went to South Africa, and I taught a leadership seminar for uh, just normal people, and we broadcast it or simulcast it to 400 sites across the continent and had about 80,000 leaders go through that training. And my wife was visiting different congregations. Instead of proclaiming the gospel to those who do not know Jesus, Rick concentrates on serving their material needs and establishing common ground with people of other faiths. To the undiscerning, this might sound like what Rick Warren is doing is noble. You must understand that while it is proper and vital for Christians to help address crises such as illiteracy and poverty, the number one responsibility of Christians is to spread the gospel message to those in spiritual darkness. As one might expect, Rick Warren has propagated his false and unbiblical purpose-driven life doctrine throughout Africa, including Rwanda. As you know, I've been coming to Rwanda for almost 15 years. But this meeting today has been a dream of mine for nearly 15 years where we bring all three sectors together. If you've ever heard me speak about the peace plan, you know that we say a stable nation must have three legs just like a stool must have at least three legs to be stable. And the same is true for a nation. You need the public sector, government and NGOs, you need the private sector, which are the businesses, and you need the faith sector, which are churches and temples. Rick Warren seeks to bring together government, business, and religious leaders to solve global challenges. As previously stated, there is nothing wrong with tackling big global challenges, but it must not be done at the expense of leading people to Jesus Christ, the only one who can save humanity from sin. Number 5. Joel Osteen Our words have creative power. When we speak something out, 
we're giving it the right to come to pass. And it's one thing to believe that you're healed, but when you say, I am healed, that's what releases the healing. When you say, I am blessed, I have favor, I'm coming out of debt, angels go to work. Good breaks will find you. The right people will track you down. And you can think positive. You can believe for favor. That's good, but nothing happens till you speak. The miracle is in your mouth. Keep speaking victory. I am healed. I am whole. You may be in debt. You keep speaking abundance. In trouble, keep speaking favor. In addictions, keep speaking freedom. Every time you declare the victory, you're getting closer to the miracle. Joel Osteen is a 59-year-old New Age televangelist and pastor of Lakewood Church, one of the largest churches in America. More than 7 million weekly and 20 million monthly viewers watch Osteen's broadcast sermons in over 100 countries. You know, I'm more a pastor because I'm talking a lot of times to the same people. So what I talk about is how do you live the Christian life? In other words, how do I forgive or how do I have a good attitude or how do I have, how do I reach my dreams? I like to talk about you know, how do we live out the Christian faith and not just... You're not, you don't do revivals. No, not necessarily. Now, your fan base is not just Christian, right? I understand you have Muslims, even atheists. How do you explain that? You know... Why would an atheist be a fan of... Well, I think what they like, Larry, is when, you know, the principles that we teach are from the Scripture, but they help, they can help anybody, you know, to reach dreams or to forgive or to uh, to have healthy, you know, good self-image. So, you know, I know I'm not a traditional pastor in terms of I'm just going down teaching Scripture by Scripture because, you know, a lot of my, you know, what I would teach would just be more how to live a, a great life. False teachers like Joel Osteen, while not always physically present in the African continent, are very much present in African homes virtually every single day, thanks to easy access to cable television, the Internet, and social media. This online post by the Gospel Coalition perfectly captures how bad the prosperity gospel championed by Joel Osteen has infested Africa. The prosperity gospel runs rampant through sub-Saharan Africa, and Uganda is no exception. Churches don't call themselves prosperity churches, and even churches claiming to oppose the prosperity gospel have it proclaimed from their pulpits. The prosperity gospel has attached itself to the theological framework that runs through this region. It has spread primarily through television. Preachers such as Benny Hinn, Creflo Dollar, Miles Monroe, and Joel Osteen can be seen on TV around the clock in Christian homes throughout Uganda. Their books are found lining the shelves of Christian bookshops. These preachers have also done a great job of personally visiting this region. Just like we warn every American to stay away from prosperity gospel preachers, we plead with Africans to shun these false preachers and prophets who promise health, wealth, fame, and happiness. God is the one who reserves the right to make you well. Have not I made the blind and the lame and the halt, he says, or to allow you to be sick? God has the right to make you prosperous or to give you little. God reserves the right to control the circumstances and events and experiences of your life for his own ends and his own purpose. Take your needs, wants, and problems to Jesus, the only one who can change your situation. His name is Jehovah Rapha, your healer, Jehovah Jireh, your provider, and when all earthly needs are not met, remember that he is Jehovah Shalom, your peace. Trust him.